Welcome everyone. Today I have a showcase for you for the K-Bar Modified Tanto, among other knives. Check it out. Steel Forged in Fire. But first, a little back history on the K-Bar company. K-Bar is an American built company that originated in the 1800s and still present in good old New York, Olean area. Welcome to Olean. Through its illustrious 120 year history, it embodies the American tradition of resilience and grit through every circumstance. It is now an iconic historical brand. How the name K-Bar came about is an extraordinary true story. Union Cultury was the original name of this company. The story goes something like this. An Alaskan hunter found himself in a deadly altercation with a large Kodiak bear that knocked his gun from his hands. To protect his life, he used a knife made from Union Cutlery and successfully killed the bear, saving his own life. In appreciation for his life, the hunter sent the bear skin to, the pre to President Wallace Brown at the time with the letter of his conquest. From this story, K-Bar name was established, which originated from Kill a Bear. This symbolized the strength and dominance of the company at the time. In more recent history, military issued K-Bar knives were used by soldiers during World War II and then the Korean War and throughout the Vietnam conflict. Today, the K-Bar knife embodies the heart and soul of our great country and our beloved American soldiers. This is just a brief overview of a very interesting history. I will leave a link to the documentary produced by K-Bar to memorialize their 120 year history. Now on with my video. Hey, what's up there everybody? And so our amazing, amazing sword and knife community. Um, I can't speak about this community enough. Uh, we're all there for each other in every possible way. Uh, it's a great community to be a part of, and uh, I hope you can join us. We are all brothers and sisters of the blade, and I welcome you all to Seal Forge and Fire. My name is Joe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that historical representation of video that I made up uh, regarding K Bar and the illustrious history that they have. Um, you can definitely take a look at their documentary that K-Bar made up. Uh, you can take a look it out on, the, on their, there's a link on their website that you can go in and see it, or you can just search them on YouTube. Definitely take a look at it. It did a really nice job in uh, giving you a the roots of where uh, K-Bar came from back in the 1800s, their struggles to get to the company they are today. It's basically a an amazing American success story and uh you should definitely check it out i think you would really enjoy it now this message is straight to scab good old scab quiet boys cut cutlery i admire your efforts in what you're doing to gain awareness for hashtag 22 a day uh regarding um everything that goes into it and the amount of work you put into every one of your videos to gain awareness out there for 22 a day. The fact that unfortunately 22 veterans a day do take their own lives. And uh, we definitely wanna gain awareness to that and let our veterans know that uh, we are all here for you. Everyone in the SOAR community, I hope we all kind of join together. Also, um, SCAB had set out, set out for April 22nd, next Thursday, to put out some kind of a video uh, that would hashtag 22 a day and that we are here for you. Uh, so I'm gonna, join scabs lead in venturing out for that on this channel uh but my own personal note in terms of this channel um starting now i want to show 
appreciation for all our active armed forces in the Navy, the Marines, the Army, the foot soldiers, the Air Force, um, on the sea, on the land, and in the air. Um, active military men and women, I just want to let you know, you are appreciated. We appreciate everything you do for us. Uh, we appreciate you leaving your homes and your families for such long periods of time in, in, in light of defending our country. And uh, we want to let you know we are here for you on this channel. We do appreciate you. I want to open up the comment section on my channel for anyone who wants to just forget about whatever I'm reviewing or whatever I'm showing you in terms of the blades. Uh, if you want to just shout out a, an appreciation to active military, uh, our beloved veterans, please, you can use my channel and uh, the comment section to do so. And so all active military and veterans, you are welcome here. And uh, we do appreciate everything that you have done and are doing for us. So that pretty much leads me to my review of the day, among other things. My K-Bar Modified Tanto. This is really a wonderful blade. K-Bar itself is uh, historically has been a military issued uh, knife that has been used in the front lines. It is still being used today. It's definitely a, a piece of history by owning this. Uh, there are other K-Bar knives that you can purchase from their website. They have a very extensive collection. It's definitely, uh, but besides that, it's an incredibly well-made knife. This particular K-Bar K -bar modified Tanto is a fighting knife, okay? It comes with the, uh, the sheet, a rubber glass filled sheet, which I'm gonna get to that as well. Um, listen, there's good and bad points on every knife that you would purchase. That's why I wanted to compare it to the cold steel offering as well. Here's the sheet that it comes. You have the clip on here to keep it in place. Keep the handle in place here. Now, to, in order to, to remove this, you actually, uh, it's hard. You can't just pull it. You got to kind of push down on this section here in order to release the blade. So if you can kind of just could do that with your thumb and it'll release very easily. And then when you put it into place, kind of locks into place as well. I would prefer maybe to have it, you know, without having to pull this back a little bit to remove it, but it is an extra safety mechanism. So I guess however you want to look at it, but um, that's one thing I like about the cold steel one, uh, the uh, leather neck, you kind of just push it out and then clip it in. Okay, so I guess it's good and good, good and bad points to everything. With this one, basically, uh, once you release the back a little bit, it kind of comes out very easily. Uh, with the cold steel, you can kind of like, you know, if somebody's next to you, you can kind of just nudge them a little bit because you have to kind of give a little force to unsnap it. So it depends on the way you look at it. This is a beautiful, beautiful blade. I'm very, very, very happy with it. It is uh, predominantly a fighting knife or a self-defense knife. That's what this type of fixed blade was made for. And that's what pretty much most K-Bars are. They're more uh, self-defense fighting type of knives. Um, it's not a very strong high utility knife. I know there's other knives that they have that can do that, uh, but that's what this particular uh, modified Tanto is, uh, is made for. I did some measurements in terms of uh, the sharpness level out of the box with this uh, modified Tanto from K-Bar. And I noticed that um, a lot of other people notice. I, I watched Eric Hussein is also a great YouTuber. He uh, noticed that there was inconsistencies in the sharpness of the blade throughout the length of the blade. And I wanted to do my own troubleshooting with that to see if that was definitely the case with the one that I, the piece that I have. And I did so, I uh, used my uh, edge sharp, uh, edge sharp uh, tester. Um, that I reviewed on one of my other videos there. And I noticed that when putting that through there, the middle of the blade where I measured first came in at about 389 sharp test. And the front of the blade actually came in at 184 sharp test. Now I haven't touched up this blade at all. I haven't put an edge on it or anything like that. I haven't even really stropped it. It's pretty much right out of the box. And I did that sharp uh, test. Uh, now, if you're unfamiliar with the product I'm talking about, the um, it gives you a grams per pressure uh, that shows you the sharpness of the blade when you cut through like some some, some thread or string. 
So if you notice on this card here, anywhere from 250 to 350 is a high, a new high-end cutlery, uh, cutlery edges. And anything between 200 and 100 is more utility razor blade. So it's very sharp. So anything under 200 is extremely sharp and more closer to like a razor blade. So the sharpness level in the middle of the blade at 389 is definitely not as sharp as you would want it to be. Also compared to the front of the blade, which is a lot sharper at 184, uh, which that goes into like utility razor blade. And you can feel the sharpness level is a little different. So if you want to basically put this through a uh, put this through your sharpener, uh, bulk grind or whatever basically you use. They even tell you on the website you, it's definitely um, it's it definitely can be sharpened and maintained. Um, every sort of knife collector should be able to sharpen their blades, and you can definitely get the edge on it that you want, and then the blade will be personally yours. It'll be at you know utility razor shop. It'll be at uh, an even three hundred range for like a, a new type of cut, cutlery blade. So it's however you want, however sharp you want to get it, you can definitely get this blade there and it'll be, uh, you'll be happy with it. So that's the good thing about it, but it's got great steel. It's actually labeled at 1095 Crow Van Steel. It's a very strong steel. It's got an HRC of 56 to 58, very strong. Uh, so it's, uh, I'm content with the sharpness level. I am going to put uh, 20 angle on here because they said the angle of the of the edge is right now 20 so you can put a, a refined 20 angle on here and it'll be perfectly fine the actual measurements on the website are different from the the uh, blade i have in hand so i did my own measurements in terms of the handle and the length and all that uh, i measured the blade length to be about uh, 7.2 from uh, just a sharp edge it's a little bit longer if you add the end of the the end the base of the blade where it says usa here but the sharp edge of the blade basically comes in at 7.2. They labeled it on the website at around seven inches. So I, it's a little bit longer, actually. Uh, the handle length is about 4.7 inches. Uh, that's pretty close to what they said on the website for the most part. And the overall length of the blade is about 12.6 uh, inches. So it's a little bit different from the website, but you're gonna expect that it's gonna vary from time to time. So if you look at the spine of the blade, it's very interesting. It's actually, it starts off at 4.18 millimeters and then it thins, it thins out, okay, to 2.16 millimeters. So it's a little bit thicker here and it thins out towards the front of the blade, towards, you know, before the middle, all the way to the front of the blade, which would tend for more of a fighting type of weapon, a thrusting type of weapon, a slashing weapon. And it also makes it extreme, extremely balanced because it brings the weight of the blade closer to your hand and you have more of a control, more control over the tip, more control over thrusting. It's a great self-defense uh, weapon. So that's what exactly this is made for and for what it's made for for fighting for self-defense they did an amazing job and mission accomplished i would say uh the actual handle is a uh, kraton g handle very very comfortable in the hand hugs your hand your hand fits perfectly on there i mean i have kind of uh medium to uh large hands and uh, it kind of fits my hand perfectly. It has a little bit of a lip if you have uh, larger hands that I think it'll really, you know, fit right into your hand. Very, very good. It's got a really nice hugging. It's got a handle that you can kind of hug with your hand and have a nice, nice security. And it's very comfortable to hold as well uh, compared to the the leather neck, which I don't think is as comfortable. The weight of the uh, the weight of the knife is a little under a pound. It's like 0.7. Under, it's under a pound, so it's about 0.75 or something like that. It's a very light, light blade. I, I mean, I can't express to you enough how comfortable this feels in your hand. And just aesthetically, I mean, it's just really, really a beautiful, beautiful knife. You notice how it kind of thins out, tapers out here a little bit, has a little bit of a different grind over here. Beautiful powder coated finish. It's really a beautiful blade to own as a collector's item. It's, a, it's great to look at. And uh, it's just all around a really, really amazing fixed blade from K-Bar, and I'm really happy with it. One particular thing that, um, again, going back to Eric Hussein, he noticed um, he put his own sharp, sharpened edge to it, refined the edge to the sharpest level he wants it at, and uh, he does a lot of cutting with it. He noticed that uh, while 
bringing it back and forth into the sheet. Now, this particular sheet is a rubber glass filled sheet. He, he had mentioned that um, putting it in and out, it kind of dulled the blade. Um, and a, a couple of other people have complained about it as well. Um, I did address this to K-Bar actually today after I heard that, and they haven't supposedly heard any uh, complaints regarding that. And um, she checked with corporate and they haven't heard anybody com particularly complaining that. I mean, I believe it if maybe nobody made a call in to complain about it or not. Um, my particular um, blade, I haven't really seen a problem with it kind of hitting the edge. Um, I The way I put it away is, there's like a little dot on the tang. I don't know if that's, um, it's actually the ping right here. Uh, and you can see the tang on the other side. Also, before I even get to that, you notice the tang on this blade goes all the way through. It's a full tang, but it's actually a shorter type of tang compared to the leather neck. I honestly put this, I, I go with this dot here. I put it away. You want to try to place this back leaning it back against the spine of the blade and locking it into place. Now I'm trying to see when I actually do that, it doesn't look like the edge is actually hitting. Now, if you were, it doesn't look like actually, if you even if you force, it looks like it kind of rocks back to full, it doesn't really hit the edge. So I don't see how it's actually happening. It may happen in, well, with Eric's, so I'll take his word for it, but I don't see it really affecting the um, the blade or the edge hitting the blade on this side um, when I do put it away with this uh, ping dot facing up. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. I just assume that's the way you want to put it away. So if you hold the spine down towards the sheet and just kind of put it away and lock it into place, it's almost like kind of exactly, exactly like kind of sheathing a uh, katana where you want to Push, have some pressure on the spine as you do put it away so the edge is not cutting into the scabbard or the wood scabbard. You want to try to do the same type of thing here. You can kind of, when you're putting it away, push it against the spine and lock it into place. So I think if you do that, you may not have a problem. But again, um, it's, you know, as I'm making this review, I just want to make you aware that people have complained about the fact that uh, replacing the, um, the knife back into the sheet has uh, people have seen the edge becoming dull. So uh, make you aware of it. I guess in terms of if you own one, if you're looking to buy one, uh, you want to be aware of that. I haven't seen that particularly yet on this knife, but I guess in time we'll tell. It's brand new. I haven't really done much with it yet, uh, but definitely uh, just be aware of that as well. But other than that, the sheet is is a great sheet, great quality. Fits the knife really well. It kind of locks into place right here. Make sure it doesn't kind of fall out of place. But you have, to have the extra security of being able to lock the handle into place like this. Okay. And there's this thing is not coming out. You can hang it around your belt as much as you want. And it's not going to accidentally uh, um, unsheet or off you. And it's it's it stays very secure in here. So um, great knife. I love it to death. I can't express enough how much I enjoy and I appreciate uh, K-Bar quality in terms of their uh, knives. I'm going to be shopping uh, with a couple of different types of military issued knives as well, but definitely take a look at the site. Uh, you're going to find something that you love and it's a piece of history. It's a great knife and I definitely recommend it. Uh, and I happen to have a cold steel Leatherneck Tonto. Now this may not be an exact representation of uh, exact comparison of these two knives because i know that k-bar also has strictly a tanto uh type of knife and cold steel has more of a fighter's type uh, fighting knife that has more contours uh closer to the k-bar uh but i have these particular knives in hand i know a lot of people have been comparing them on other videos people have been trying to decide which to go with so i happen to have these in hand so now you can notice the size differences is Size differences are definitely there right from the get-go without even me giving you measurements, okay? So now you have the uh, the cold steel Leatherneck Tonto. It comes in at a total 11.9 inches compared to K-Bar's 12.6 uh, inches. It's a longer blade. The handle is exactly the same. They're both about 4.7. 
very, you know, very similar, if not exactly the same size handle. So you have both knives side to side right here. They're, listen, they're both great knives. I love the cold steel knife. Okay. It's, it's actually, it's a great, great, um, utility knife. Now, what I notice about the cold steel and the leather neck Tonto, the leather neck Tonto seems to me more of a tough utilities type of knife. Okay. It could definitely take a beating a little bit more. You can tell definitely a weight difference because there's more steel on the leather neck. It's, it's a shorter blade, but there's more steel. Um, if you notice the spine of the Leatherneck Tonto, I measured the spine at a constant from tip to base at 4.86 millimeters compared to the K bar, which actually is at 4.18 millimeters at its thickest end right here. This is more, uh, this is a tougher type of knife, bushcraft, taking out to the woods, chopping things up, making a fire, chopping some wood up. I definitely think that this is the, this type of knife, that's what it's made for. So you have your fighter's knife and you have your more of utility knife. I know you've been seeing this on my table here. So an honorable mention is this beautiful Bowie from Ontario. Uh, it's an SP10 Marine Raider Bowie. Look at that. This is a beautiful, beautiful Bowie, okay? Very, very thick spine. It's got 1095 power coated steel very tough. Okay. Um, I wish it was a little bit more balanced, but holding it more and more, uh, you kind of get used to the weight. I don't know if that's a trademark of how Bowie's are that it's a little bit front heavy. You guys could comment, let me know if that's the case, but this particular one, I wish they put a little bit more meat into the, uh, into the handle to not make it as front heavy. It kind of just wants a tip, you know, had to, if you're not holding it tight, the tip really kind of weighs, weighs it down, but there's a lot of steel on this. I mean, this is, I mean, the spine of this blade, I actually measured the spine, did the measurements in the spine. The spine is actually 6.78 millimeters compared to what I thought was thick on the cold steel at 4.86. So 6.86 millimeters on the spine. It's a really thick stout blade. Thins out here in the center, Bowie style. Um, it's got, it came very sharp out of the box. It's given the weight of this blade, and the sharpness level that it came in, which you can make it sharper if you want. I mean, self-defense, you can kind of chop down the person in front of you and possibly the tree that they're standing in back of at the same time. So not to say that you want to do that or you should do that, but that's what you can do. So it's a Raider Bowie from Ontario. Again, a great American-made knife, very comfortable handle. And uh, take a look at this Bowie if you're in the market for a Bowie. Great quality knife, solid, great steel. I'm very fond of this one as well. All right, guys, I'm going to attempt to wrap up this video. So once again, you have your Ontario SB10 Raider Bowie, beautiful Bowie. You have your Cold Steel Leatherneck Tanto, and you have your highlighted uh, highlighted knife for this, for this review is your K-Bar Modified Tanto. The actual number of the, of the blade is 1266. Um, all great knives. I think you should own them all. But specifically talking about K-Bar today, which is the theme and the purpose of this video, uh, they make some great blades. There's a blade for everyone out there. If you want to commemorate your uh, the armed forces, you have your Marine issue, your Army issue, your Navy issue. There's definitely a blade that you're going to love. Very well-made blades, very well-made steel and handles, very comfortable in the hand, great to use. I definitely recommend taking a look at a K-Bar. Anyone who's a knife connect collector should definitely take a look at these, uh, these knives. They're a beautiful piece of history from a great, great, strong company. If you check out K-Bar, you're gonna really gonna love their knives. So um, that's all I have for you guys here. And just to wrap it up, guys, again, to um, echo everything that Scab is doing from Choir Boys Cultury, uh, 22 a day. Uh, I'm definitely gonna try to mention that in this video to help him in his lead in making uh, growing awareness for 22, for hashtag 22 a day. And my own per per purpose of this channel going forward is to show our appreciation and our love for our active military, for our veterans, for our active men and women that are out there and their families for all the sacrifices they do. We want to tell you guys, you have a place on this channel. You have a place to comment on this channel. We love you. We appreciate everything you do for us. For everyone out there, military, uh, veterans, give them a hug and show them how much you appreciate everything they've done and all the sacrifices they make. We love you guys. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you next time. This is Joe, Steel Forge and Fire. Have a good one, guys. Thanks.